Aristide was not popular. If it's the Haitians who chased him, why is it so dangerous for him to be, even in Jamaica, he's too close to Haiti? And even today, in, in, in the current, this man suggesting that, you know, he doesn't think it's a good idea for Aristide to come back. I mean, don't the Haitians have to say <laughs> whether they want to accept exile as part of their lifestyle? We suffered exile under the Duvalier dictatorship. We would hope that if we have friends in the international community, they would be helping us getting away from the situation of exiling people. If Jean-Bertrand Aristide committed a crime, let it be the Haitian justice system that try him and the Haitian people to see what happened. And I'll make that statement here. I think it's important because whenever you talk about countries like Haiti or the Congo or any place in Africa, or the First Nations uh, populations, the word corruption comes in. As if corruption was a genetic disease that affects certain people on this planet and not others. And the same thing happens when you talk about not-for-profit organizations. So, you know, you can trust a Canadian NGO, but you cannot trust a Haitian NGO. On what basis are we saying these things? I'll remind people that in the past uh, three months, there are at least three priests that have been arrested as pedophiles who were in Haiti pretending to be helping all oh, these poor orphans, etc. Because when you weaken the state, there is no protection to verify, you know, is this organization legitimate or not. So anybody who comes from a rich country with PR machines, especially if they're collecting millions of dollars, can pretend that they're helping children and what they're actually doing is trafficking organs. They are raping children. They are doing all kinds of stuff in the name of helping the poor Haitians. Whether it is a Haitian organization or a Canadian organization or an American organization, it should be a matter of standard verification whether these people are legitimate or not, not just on the basis of their origin. This is a racist kind of uh, um, thinking that allows these things to be happening. And so that's what we are saying. And, like, and we are guilty of that as Haitians and as Africans in general. And that's why for the past five years, I have made the decision that if I respect my white friends, and I have many white friends, I am not going to have a speech that is different when I am within my black community than when I am within my black, white uh, brothers and sisters. Out of respect for these elderly women that I have met in PEI, and when they hear about what's happening in Haiti, some of them did not just to give money to movements and whatever. They bought a plane ticket because I challenged them to do so. They went to Haiti. They saw for themselves. They didn't take my word for it. When I see people show that much courage, I have to show them the respect that they deserve and tell them the things straight up. Because I'm also reminded that if I'm alive today, it's because 150 million human beings went through the hell of racial slavery. They didn't have internet. They didn't have full-time jobs. When they were caught learning how to read and write, they put an iron muzzle on their mouths. They used to put gown powder in their uh, genital parts and blow them up just for fun. I am the result of these people surviving. Therefore, I have an obligation not to take my life for myself so that my son, my daughter, don't have to fight the struggle that I had the responsibility of fighting in my lifetime. Thank you, sister. Wow. <laughs> but I have one final question. And that question is, why is it that Haiti uh, is, what is, what is the role of Haiti? Why do the Americans take such a great interest in messing with Haiti? That may sound like a naive question, but, okay. but first, I, I got to ask it. First, it's not just the Americans who are messing with Haiti. Canada is messing with Haiti. France is messing in Haiti, with Haiti, and so is the United States. Haiti is not a hellhole, as they're saying. Remember, when Columbus landed, his first place of landing was Bahamas, and then the first place where they established uh, a, a, you know, a colony was Haiti. They were digging for gold. But what kind of equipment did they have at the time? So what gold were they taking? They were taking the surface gold.
During the whole time of racial slavery, there were no big movements of collecting gold because there were no e major equipment. They were just taking the surface gold. Right now, as I'm speaking to you, there's a Canadian company called Eurasian Mines that has concession on 10% of the Haitian territory digging gold. There is oil in Haiti, okay? And Haiti is right beside Cuba, right beside not too far from Venezuela. And there are American congressmen who actually did already write to President Obama officially telling him to take this opportunity to prepare to get rid of Chavez. So there are all kinds of reasons why these countries are interested in Haiti. And in particular, if you go read uh, the publications of ca uh, Canadian f uh, military, you will see a number of, of analyses where they are saying that Haiti is an important uh, opportunity for Canada to assert itself on the international scene. And I'll just read you one quote from a Canadian politician, and it's not anyone. It's our former foreign minister, Bill Graham, quoted in an interview with Janice Gorstein that we usually see on TV. And this is the, uh, from her book, The Unexpected War. Bill Graham says, and I quote, there is a limit to how much we can constantly say no to the political masters in Washington. All we had was Afghanistan to wave. On every other file, we were offside. Eventually, we came onside on Haiti, so we got another arrow in our quiver. This is our foreign minister saying that. And so I would challenge Prime Minister, former Prime Minister Jean Chrétien, former Prime Minister Paul Martin, former uh, Canadian representative at the OAS, David Lee, who were there when the meeting was taking place right here at Meech Lake called the Ottawa Initiative on Haiti, January 31st, February 1st, 2003, one year before the coup that Michel Vastel published in L'Actualité, saying that Aristide must go and Haiti put under UN tutelage. That was one year before the fact he was saying that. That meeting is when they plotted the overthrow of Haiti's president. These people were there. I would ask them, you know, we're all getting old and eventually we will die all of us on this planet, I would challenge Prime Minister Jean Chrétien to do the honorable thing. Come out and tell the truth, because the truth liberates. Tell the truth about how Canada made a drastic mistake by joining the French and the Americans to conduct the coup. Because the coup was not against Jean-Bertrand Aristide. There were 7,000 elected officials. They removed all of them in one single day, including some of the people who were trained in search and rescue by the Aristide government, they were all removed. So when the storms happened in September 2004, there was nobody trained, nobody with any equipment to do the first rescue. Okay, Because by the time the foreigners arrive in their big planes and their flags and their little flags that they distribute so people can say thank you, thousands of people have died. It's the first people on the ground who can save the first lives. Just like we saw these five young ladies, God bless them, who were saved by Haitians. They went to Haiti to save the Haitians. Well, it's the Haitians who saved them. Because there's nothing magical about that, about human beings saving human beings. In my own house, you know, I remember this as a lesson. You know, one day I was victim of racism uh, right here in Ottawa. And the very same day I go home, and I found that my house almost burnt. And it's my white neighbor who broke into my, my window and saved the house for me. That was an important lesson to me because I was really angry that day because of the racist incident. And then I got home. It reminded me that we are all human beings on this planet. And you cannot take the ugliness of one person and just expose it to, the whole, to a whole nation or a whole race of people. So if we can use our intelligence to understand that, I think that's what we need. We need to go to a higher level, and that's why I'm challenging all these political people so that, and I think some of them might do it. So again, Jean Chrétien, Paul Martin, uh, tell the truth. You know the truth, and we know that you